G'day guys. Over the last few months, we've been busy preparing the next firmware update for the Elite series and I wanted to go through some of the new features and functions that I'm excited about and I'm really looking forward to utilizing in some of our upcoming builds. First is the communication speed. We've been able to get the ECU to go online with the ESP software much faster than previous versions, cutting the initial online time by around 30 seconds and the second time you go online with an ECU almost instantly. While we were working on the communication speed, we also increased the data log download speed to almost instant. We know how important it is to get the data out quickly so you can turn your race car around in the pits as fast as possible. The last bit of work on the data logging area was to increase the logging space from two megabytes to eight megabytes. So don't be surprised when you do a firmware update and then you get four times the logging space. Next, we've added cruise control. You can now race your car at the strip or the circuit and then enable cruise control on the way home and just relax. You need an electronic throttle and a cruise control input for this function to work. This firmware version's also included our advanced closed loop flat shifting system. This is perfect for sequential transmissions that need a power reduction on full throttle upshifting. We accept a load cell style gear knob and a gear position sensor to determine exactly what state the gearbox is in and then make an intelligent decision to cut engine power or reintroduce it over the next few engine cycles. This means your expensive sequential gearbox is in good hands. We've also introduced our electronic throttle blip, a function that automatically blips the throttle on downshifts for the perfect shift every time. As long as the engine is decelerating, the throttle position's at 0%, and the brake pedal is active, the ECU will look up a gear ratio table and blip the throttle to the required RPM for the lower gear that you're shifting to. And this prevents gearbox wear and avoids the car being unsettled when making like a mid-corner downshifting. For the drag racing fraternity, we've also been adding some new functionality. An advanced progressive nitrous strategy allows you to control your nitrous solenoids in a wet or a dry setup and enable the system based on any conditions you can imagine. Perfect for racing classes that are limited to only one or two stages of nitrous. Most racers who are using the progressive strategy are mapping the amount of nitrous introduced into the engine based on the race timer. This way, you can add just the right amount at each point in the track. Next up, we added a humidity sensor support. Now, humidity by itself is not so important, but once the ECU uses the information it provides, along with other atmospheric conditions, the ECU will show you the actual water grains, or specific humidity, which you can use to map your nitrous volumes and corrections against. This is an absolute must for any nitrous pro mod racer. While we were refining the drag racing functions, we added a delay timer to our trans brake bump box function. Now, this delay is super handy for bracket racing drag cars that need to run a specific time. When the race starts, they release the trans brake button and the car just sits there and waits until the timer expires, then it takes off. This essentially adds that delay time to your overall race time. If the car's consistent, it'll make it run consistently slower with this function. So now, now, that, I, now that I say it like that, it does sound a bit odd, but that's racing. The last drag racing functionality addition is the ability for the torque management system to be able to be mapped against either a target drive shaft RPM, a target engine RPM, or both. Now, to use this function, you'd map out the maximum expected drive shaft and engine RPM versus the race timer. For example, at two seconds into the run, you might want a maximum of say 8,000 engine RPM and 1,200 drive shaft RPM. Any more than this, and we know the car's wheel spinning because it can't really get there. Now, when the actual exceeds the target, you then have the choice to limit power by retarding ignition timing, cutting a percentage of the ignition events, or dropping boost pressure. This is another feature to ensure every pass is as consistent and as fast as possible. And finally, the last update for this firmware version is the addition of full support for the Ford Falcon Elite Pro plug-in range. We've been working on this for quite a while now and I'm really pleased to say that BA, BF, FG and FGX are all sorted, so we've got those covered. 
Thanks very much for taking the time to see what we've been working on here at Haltech. And I look forward to letting you know about the next firmware update, which we've already started working on. I'll see you then.